In CNN 10's fall season, there are three shows left to go, including this one. Afterward, we'll be off the air until January 3rd, when our new season begins. I'm Carl Azus. We start today with one of the big questions that faced a technology executive yesterday on Capitol Hill. Is Google biased against politically conservative users and in favor of politically liberal ones? That's something that a number of Republicans, including U.S. President Donald Trump, have accused Google of being. And Representative Lamar Smith, a Republican from Texas, said this kind of bias was, quote, programmed into the company's culture. The company's CEO, Sundar Pichai, says Google's operations are nonpartisan. Leave this company without political bias and work to ensure that our products continue to operate that way. To do otherwise would be against our core principles and our business interests. Google isn't the only technology company that's been accused of bias. The House Judiciary Committee has had other hearings this year on the subject, with the CEO of Twitter discussing the issue in September. Yesterday's event wasn't just about bias accusations, though. Lawmakers asked Pichai about how much information Google collects from its users, particularly on its Android operating system, which can be found on many smartphones. The executive responded that Google has ways users can limit the info they share with the company. There were also questions about a rumored Google launch in China. That country's communist government censors the media, and human rights advocates are concerned that China could use a Google-type search engine to spy on people. Pichai said his company had no plans to launch a search product in China, but he also said there's been a limited internal effort at Google to create something for China. When Sergey Brin and Larry Page first met at Stanford in 1995, they argued a lot. Soon, they put their differences aside and became partners. Brin and Page developed a search engine that used links to rank the importance of each result. This project, called Backrub, would soon become Google. The first version of Google was hosted on Stanford servers. It used so much bandwidth, the servers crashed. Brin and Page left Stanford's PhD program to pursue Google full time. Their first office was a Northern California garage. All right, so this is our garage. In 1998, Google was incorporated and was growing rapidly by 2001. Brennan Page recruited seasoned businessman and engineer Eric Schmidt to serve as CEO. In 2004, Google went public at $85 a share, considered a disappointment at the time. Its IPO filing famously included the phrase, don't be evil. As Google grew, it expanded beyond search, with big acquisitions like YouTube, Android, and Waze. The company also rolled out now iconic products like Gmail, Google Maps, and Chrome. In 2015, Google folded itself into a new parent company called Alphabet. Page and Brin would lead Alphabet, and Sundar Pichai became the CEO of Google. But with Google's success came controversy. Privacy advocates have raised questions about how it collects and uses data. Conservatives allege its search results are biased. The EU has fined the company billions of dollars for antitrust violations, and Google has come under fire for issues like diversity and sexual harassment. Still, it remains one of the world's most valuable and most recognizable tech companies. Sonica Menon is a 15-year-old in Chicago, Illinois, who's making news for her extraordinary birthday parties. It's not the ones she's had that made her a CNN young wonder, but the ones she's thrown. Sonica started a nonprofit organization to help the less fortunate experience a birthday blowout, and it's brought smiles and celebrations to hundreds of people. I think at a birthday, it's important to create memories, and it's important to create something that you can hold on to and remember for a long time in your life. Uh, happy birthday, Anna. Thank you. The birthday giving program's mission is to provide birthday bags and to celebrate all individuals who are affected by poverty, addiction, abuse, homelessness, and physical and mental challenges. All right guys, let's start talking about tomorrow's birthday parties. Cake making is a very time consuming process. We think about all the little details that go into it, the decorating, like Anya, she's really into decorating. It's worth it. It shows that we care about what we do. I feel like we've accomplished a lot so far. It's just grown and grown and grown. Like we started with 
one organization, and now we're partnered with over 20 organizations. Yeah, we're Thank glad you. to be here. Yeah. I handle the children and adults division, and then Rinna takes care of the senior division. Hi, yeah. Oh my gosh. I think it's important to celebrate the seniors because I really didn't want them to be forgotten. And a lot of the seniors living in nursing homes have family out of state or friends that don't come to visit them very often. I hope that they really feel special and that they feel remembered. We want to inspire other younger individuals to take the initiative and to try making a difference. Some people may feel a little bit hesitant to try a new idea, but you'll never know the impact unless you actually try. Like, this idea started off so small, and we're, we're surprised it even got this far. I get a warm feeling in my heart. It's a priceless feeling, seeing everyone happy and smiling and giggling, knowing that they feel that way because of what we do. You're more of yourself when you're around other people who make you feel special. Nothing else can ever replace that. Ten Second Trivia. Which of these European countries became a Christian kingdom under Stephen I in the year 1000 AD? Hungary, Romania, Ukraine, or Austria? Hungary is the answer, a nation of Central Europe whose current government is a parliamentary republic. There's a statue of St. Stephen in the Hungarian capital of Budapest. The city's history predates even him. Encyclopedia Britannica says it was a Roman town and military camp in the first century. It was likely populated before that. A 160-year-old cafe in Budapest offers a unique taste of the city, something that joins its rich past with the present. Six layers and a storied past. This might just be Budapest's most famous pastry. So you are interested in the Dovosh cake, as I guess. <laughs> That's right. And to learn more, there's just one place to go. Budapest. Café Zserbód lies at the heart of the Hungarian capital and has been in business for 160 years. It is real, so it not looks like a 100 years old table or a chandelier. It is <laughs> more than 100 years old. The Dobosh cake is not only Anna's favorite. I have to admit, um, every, every week I, I eat it. But one of her restaurant's specialties. Dobosh cake is the most famous cake in, in Hungary. The uniqueness of the Dobosh cake is, of course, the caramel on the top. And the really good quality of chocolate. It's important that it has six layer. Surely you can cheat a bit. No, it's six. On, with, the, with the top, it's six. Okay, okay. So why six? You can ask uh, Dobosh C. Józef why it's six. Actually, asking Joseph Dobosh about the mysteries behind his cake might be tough. The famous confectioner first baked it in 1885 for the Hungarian National Exhibition, and it was groundbreaking at the time. The use of the caramel and the color of the caramel. Nobody used it before like this way. His use of buttercream was also a first. And together, these two innovations meant that the cake stayed fresh for longer, allowing it to be shipped across the continent. Dobosh carefully guarded his recipe early on, but upon retiring, he shared it with Budapest's most famous cafes. Today, Café Zserbód serves around 25,000 slices of Dobosh each year. But these days, the cake doesn't travel as much as it used to. We have many emails. Please send a Dobosh cake. But we always say, I'm sorry, no. Please visit Hungary again, visit Budapest again, and taste it here in the Café Gerbo. There are a chalk a lot of layers to that story. It's extractly the kind of thing that butters you up, eggs you on, caramels your heart, takes the cake, bakes you want your just desserts, or simply put, it leaves you hungry for more, y'all. I'm Carla Zeus, that's CNN 10.